What's up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my betting breakdown for UFC 264. We have Conor McGregor going against Dustin Poirier. And as always, we're going to go through the card, talking about the card from a betting perspective and strictly a betting perspective only. If you do want a more further in-depth breakdown on the fights, go check out my full card breakdown and prediction video, as well as I did a live stream on Friday as well. So go check those out if you have not. Um, but yeah, I just want to point out that it's beginning of the month, so now is a great time to sign up on the Patreon. Have over 300 members there. Hit a new record of members last month. Hopefully do it again this month. Hopefully hit a new record there. Um, $10 a month or $2.50 per week. Um, lots of great value there. You get you know the advanced stats, courtesy of Uncle Weezy. Also does a matchup template as well. You know, get early access to my bets as well. I actually already have two bets um, in, in two weeks. And then I have another bet that's going to be next week as well. Already posted. So getting ahead of the game and uh, just, you know, articles, you know, betting breakdown videos, just lots of extra content if you guys are looking at that. Or if you just want to support me, you know, either way. I mean, um, don't really ask for any donations nothing like that but a best way to support me is that patreon um, as you do get something you know to go along with it as well so feel free to check that out it is in the description below if you are looking for more content but as I always say, my bets will always be free, never changing that. I do post my bets on Twitter every fight day, Saturday. Um, you can check out my Twitter, DFS underscore numbers. Instagram is DFS by the numbers. I'll be posting all my bets there. I have six bets as of now, but there are two spots that I'm really looking at, so I might or might not end up with an extra bet on my card. So we'll see that, but you can follow me on there just in case I do add something, and I, I, I do sometimes. So... Uh, the last thing I say I'll say is I do have a live stream going live one hour prior to the prelims. Um, come hang out. We're gonna talk some line movement. Maybe I do add a bet or two as well. We can talk about all those. We'll talk about some DFS as well. So lots going on. Um, and again, feel free to hit the like button. That'd be much much appreciated. One small like I always say goes a long way. And also subscribe if you have not yet, so you not miss out on the content throughout the week. Have a lot going on week in and week out. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I say we get into it. Starting with the first fight of the night, and it's going to be my first bet of the night. And yeah, I'll be honest, um, I took the shot here on Yazong Hu, uh, plus 140. I have one unit on it. And where the line's at now, especially um, you know, as the fight or the fight day goes on, um, we might see even more money come in on, on Hu. And uh, I think this fight should be close, you know, li closely line, maybe like a pick em, maybe even slight favorite Hu based off the fact that. You know, he's taking a three-year layoff. He's very young. He was 23 years old the last time he's fought. Um, he's 26 years old now, training at a very good ca uh, camp in uh, Tiger Muay Thai. Um, but yeah, this fight is uh, a fight that um, lots of variants. We have not seen both these guys in so long, but I just don't know why Amadovsky was, at least was, minus 170. We've seen money coming in on Hugh, and, and rightfully so. Um, what I like about Hugh is, you know, he's not terrible. He's not horrible. You know, good striking, lots of volume. Um, what I like about him is, you know, he doesn't move his head at all. Terrible striking defense, but the guy has a cinder block as a chin, I mean, as a head. Uh, this guy is, uh, you know, he's hittable, but he can definitely take a shot. He is moving down to middleweight. Um, his first UFC fight was at a heavyweight. He took the fight on four days' notice. His second UFC fight was at light heavyweight, and this fight's at middleweight. He looks good. He looked great on the skills. He's going to be the much bigger fighter in this fight. Taking the shot on the dog here taking the shot at the dog at plus 140 um i think he can has more ways to win as if amadovsky wins it's going to have to be by knockout amadovsky a 100 finish rate um all of those by knockout which yeah it could definitely happen but you know uh, hugh has shown a good chin um you know at potential improvements in a plus 140 i'm willing to take a shot and honestly i would not bet it at plus 105 plus 110 potentially but if you dig it in early i, I do think it's a solid bet i do think there's some solid value on that line but again like this fight is uh, lots of variants. Can't believe I'm betting on this fight, but we'll see what happens. Give me Hugh to win the fight. Uh, the only thing, other thing I was looking at was the under two and a half, which if you like Amadovsky, probably the way to go, especially because Amadovsky, 100% finish rate. Even Hugh, 100% finish rate. Both guys have been finishing half their losses. Uh, the under two and a half is minus 155. I don't hate that. Uh, the under one and a half, I probably wouldn't go there. But um, if he, if Amadovsky does win, it's inside the distance. As if Hugh wins, it's probably inside the distance. But I could also see... Hugh, like, grinding out a decision as well. So um, the pick for me is Hugh. The bet is Hugh, plus 140. And, uh, yeah, taking a shot on the dog there. Next, we have Zalgas Magulov going against Jerome Rivera. I like Zalgas. I think he's the better fighter. Do I like the minus 310? No, I do not. Um, just a... Uh, 
The advantages of Rivera, he's going to have a six, like a six inch height advantage, like a six inch reach advantage, something I don't like there. And Zalgas, you know, tends to fight in a lot of close fights. In this fight, maybe, maybe it is close. And at minus 310, I just don't see myself getting there. But I will pick him to win. I'm not high on Rivera at all. I don't really think he's a UFC caliber fighter. 0 3 in the UFC, arguably lost his contender series fight as well. Um, I think it's a loser leaves town matchup where both guys have no UFC wins yet. And somebody's going to be leaving after this fight. I'm going to take Zalgas to win just because I think he's the more skilled fighter. But, man, this fight could be close. So I kind of caution you on the minus 310, putting in parlays and all that. But as far as a straight pick, I'll go Zalgas. Uh, the prop that stuck out to me would be Zalgas by decision. Although Rivera has been finished in four of his five losses, I believe, um, you know, Zalgas, not much of a finisher. Zalgas has like a 51% finish rate. You know, not much power. He's not going to submit Rivera as well. So if you do like Zalgas, instead of laying that minus 310, I think the minus 115 is probably the way to go. So the pick Zalgas by decision, uh, no bet there. Next, we have Tavares going against Akhmadov. A uh, really good fight here. The money's coming in on Akhmadov. And yeah, I like Tavares. He's shown some very good takedown defense throughout his career, especially in that last fight against Antonio Carlos Jr. Uh, Tavares' takedown defense looked flawless. But again, you know, Akhmadov is going to be the better wrestler between him and, and Jr. So I kind of, you know, a little bit iffy on that part. Uh, I think there's a little bit of recency bias just because of how good Tavares' takedown defense looked in that last fight. But. You know, his take on defense in general throughout his career has been very good. So I think Akhmadov could potentially have some early success. It's just the gas tank of Akhmadov's horrible, especially if Tavares is able to stuff a lot of these takedowns. We're going to see Akhmadov slow down tremendously. You know, Tavares is going to have the striking advantage, in my opinion. Tavares is going to have a much better gas tank. So yeah, first round could be iffy, but I think as the fight goes on, he stuffs more and more takedowns. Akhmadov does slow down, and I think that Tavares does win the decision, which is plus 130. I don't hate that. I don't hate the money line at, uh, as well. Um, I don't hate the over as well. I think this fight does go the distance. So those are kind of three spots I was looking at. That ended up not pulling the trigger on any of them. But if I was to bet the fight, it would probably be either Tavares straight, Tavares by decision, or even like the over two and a half where the fight goes to decision. I think the over is like minus 220, minus 210. I think the fight goes is like minus 190, minus 200. I don't hate that. I don't hate that. So I'll, I'll take Tavares here though. No bet for me. Next, we have Jennifer Maya going against Jessica I, and I think there's a ton of recency bias in this fight. And, and I'll pick Maya, but man, I don't really think she should be minus 200. We do see some money coming in on I. Um, you know, the recency bias is um, Jennifer Maya took off a round of or won a round against Valentina Shevchenko. But going back into the career of Maya and seeing you know some of the stats, she has only attempted four takedowns in the UFC. I think it's like six fight sample, and she's only landed two of them. One of them coming against Valentina Shevchenko. So you got to think that if you are laying the minus 200 on Maya, and I see a lot of people doing that, um, you got to think that she, you you wanted to go out there and get takedowns. And just looking through the stats and her fights, it's just not something she does. So if she does go out here and she has a good game plan, she fights smart, she gets this fight down to the mat. I think she'll make it look easy. Yeah, she'll probably look minus 200 then. But if she does not go for takedowns, if she does not get a takedown, this fight's gonna be very very close. Very, very close. Jessica I, horrible takedown defense, 57%. I think Maya is going to have a significant uh, advantage on the ground. It's just, will Maya take it there? If she takes it there, yeah, she'll look minus 200. If she doesn't, man, this fight is going to be so close. I want nothing to do with this fight. I'm not betting on this fight. If anything, I'd probably take the shot on I, to be honest. But even then, like I, it's going to be a close fight. Gonna go to decision. I just want nothing to do with it. So um, I guess the play that stuck out to me, if anything, I buy decision. But again, I just don't want to bet on this fight. But as far as a straight pick, I'll, I'll pick Maya because you gotta think, hey, take down Jessica. I you'll, you'll win the fight. But again, like going through her record, going through the stats, it's not something she does as much as I'd like uh, to to even consider laying minus two hundred on her. But I'll, I'll pick Maya for the win. I think she does fight smart, get it down to the mat, and uh, take a round or two. All right, Aliyah Tapura going against Ryan Hall. No bet here for me. I thought before getting to the tape, uh, Tapura would be a parlay piece for me. But, man, Ryan Hall is such a tricky puzzle to solve. Um, and I, I did break this fight down. I went through the stats a little bit. I won't do that here. But to sum it up, Ryan Hall, I think he's an underrated striker. Very good at keeping the range. A 75% striking defense. And, and you could argue that it's not against the best competition. And it's not. But look at look at who Tapura is facing. Damon Jackson. Yusuf Zalal, who I believe Yusuf Zalal just got cut. And I'm a huge Taporia guy. I, I love him. Um, I've been on him, you know, since the very first time he got in the UFC against Yusuf Zalal, better him as a dog. I like the guy a lot, but I think he's getting a little bit overrated in the spot. I see a lot of people saying that Taporia is going to go out here and start Ryan Hall, knock him out. Yeah, but Ryan Hall has never been knocked out. And you go through the record of Taporia, and Taporia only has two knockout wins. He's more of a submission guy. He's a legit black belt. 
Um, but will he want to go down to the mat with Ryan Hall? And he's talking in his interview saying that, you know, he's he wants to grapple with Ryan Hall. He said he, he wants to fight to start in the 50-50 position. And I, I think he's joking because if I was to pour you, I pretty easy win if you just keep it on the feet. Ryan Hall is going to flop to his back. Ryan Hall is going to do, you know, Imanari rules, all that good stuff. Taporia, easy win if he does not engage with the, the, the grappling in Hall. But I kind of have a feeling he does. And if you are laying minus 250 on Taporia, might be a little bit sweaty. I think he'll be fine. I think Taporia wins. But I, I I don't think he knocks him out. I definitely don't think he submits Ryan Hall. So Taporia by decision is kind of how I look. Plus 230, not terrible. Uh, because again, like, Taporia, only two knockouts on his record. One against Damon Jackson. I mean, he knocks out Damon Jackson and it's like... People think he's Francis and Ghana or something, but you know the bread and butter for him is, is the wrestling, the grappling. But his striking has came a long way. His striking has been looking a lot better. I do favor him in the striking, but I don't think he's going to knock out Ryan Hall. I'd be kind of surprised. It could happen 100%, but I'd be kind of surprised. So I'll take Taporia, Taporia by decision. No bet for me, but if I was to take a take a bet, I'd probably take Taporia by decision. Even the fight goes to decision is like plus money. That I kind of have some interest in as well, but both guys are very dangerous. Taporia, 90% finish rate. Hall very dangerous himself, uh, but yeah, plus money. It's uh, kind of tempting, but no bet here for me. All right, next we have Trevin Giles going against Driscus to pluses, and yeah, I have a bet here. I have the fight doesn't go to decision minus one thirty-five. I have one point five units on it, and I guess the big thing to note here is Driscus has never seen the scorecards ever. Hundred percent finish rate for Driscus, and he's been finished in both of his losses. And Trevin Giles decent finisher himself. Um, lots of finishes by submission for Giles, lots of finishes by knockout. He's a brown belt in BJJ, so capable of finishing everywhere. Both guys are. Both guys are capable of finishing it by knockout, and both guys are capable of finishing it by submission. On the flip side, I think both guys are capable of getting knocked out. I think both guys are capable of getting submitted. Uh, Giles has been submitted twice, uh, once by Cummings in the third round, once by Mearshart in the third round. Driscus has been finished twice, once by knockout, once by submission. We have seen Giles rocked before as well. So yeah, I think both guys are live for a knockout. I think both guys are live for a submission, and I think someone gets finished in this fight. But yeah, both guys in their combined, I think like 33 fights combined. Both guys, Giles and Duplessis has never lost. They've never lost by decision. Never lost by decision. Never happened. So at that point, you know, I'm definitely willing to take a shot there and the fight isn't a good decision. I kind of caution you on playing like the under two and a half though because all four of the losses, believe it or not, all four of them have came in the third round. That's why I decided to go with the fight doesn't go rather than the than the under. I get those extra two and a half minutes. But yeah, I do think this finishes. As far as a picking a winner, I'll take Giles because he has fought the better competition. I do think he's the, the better fighter in this fight. But, you know, Driscus is so dangerous, you can never count him out. So, I think someone gets finished. I'll be rooting for a finish. Uh, give me the fight. Doesn't go to decision. Next, we have Michelle Pereira versus Nico Price. I do have a bet on here as well. And I also have the fight. Doesn't go to decision. I got it at minus 166. I do have two units on it. And I think there's a ton of recency bias in this line because um, Nico Price just went to decision with Connell, uh, Donald Cerrone. Uh, and you believe it or not, that was the first time in, in Nico Price's UFC career where Price has went to decision the very first time. So I think there's some recency bias from that aspect. And on the flip side, I think there's a lot of recency bias in the Michelle Pereira side of things because Pereira went to decision with Chaos Williams in a fight that everybody thought was finishing. But the problem is, you know, this is a, a Nico Price fight. Nico Price is a, a killer be killed fighter. Nico Price has never lost by decision. Three knockout losses, one submission loss. Nico Price has no regards to any striking defense at all. He's a 49% striking defense, which is one of the worst on the entire card. And Pereira can crack. Pereira can hit very, very hard. And in the Chaos Williams fight, Williams was having a lot of success when he came forward, when he blitzed with combinations. He only did it a couple times, but when he did it, he had a lot of success. Nico Price is going to be doing that all fight, so I think both guys are live for a finish. I think Nico Price can finish anybody at any time, anywhere. And I think, you know... Um, Pereira has the ability to maybe find a submission or or knock out Price because Price has no striking defense. But this is going to be war. This is going to be fun. And I kind of brought it up in my live stream. Like, if that Price Cerrone fight never happened, or if Price knocked him out or whatever, or if the, the Pereira Chaos Williams fight never happened, we'd probably see the fight doesn't go to the decision at something crazy like minus 300, minus 350. Because typically, Nico Price fights, they finish. They finish just based off the style of, 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 of uh, Nico Price there. So yeah, I like the fight doesn't go. I think there's a ton of value on that line um, just based off of, of, of it being a Nico Price fight, to be honest. So two units there, minus 166, I do like that. 
All right, Max Griffin, Carlos Condit. I like Max Griffin here quite a bit. I do have a two-unit bet on him. I got him at minus 172. It's just a, a glaring path to victory. I mean, if Max Griffin has any fight IQ at all, he will get this fight down to the mat early and often. And, you know, Carlos Condit has given up the most takedowns in UFC history at 58. He has a 39% takedown defense. And Griffin's a very good wrestler. Decent top control. His striking's coming along. This is the best Griffins we've ever we've ever seen. Carlos Condit, you know, definitely, you know, towards the end of his career, yes, he has two wins in a row, but you take a look at who he went, went against, won against, Court McGee, in a fight where Court McGee attempted zero takedowns. Zero takedowns, which I, I still scratch my head over that because the next fight, you see Court McGee taking down um, Silva, a legit BJJ black belt, but he doesn't take down Carlos Condit for some reason. So that was weird. But yeah, if Griffin you know gets this fight down to the mat, if if he tries to, he's gonna have success. Um, it's just up to Griffin's fight IQ. You gotta think like, you know, like everybody knows like take Carlos Condit down, you'll have success. You gotta think Max Griffin knows that as well. So if Max Griffin fights smart, if he goes for takedowns, I think he'll look like a huge favorite here. If he for some reason does not shoot takedowns like Court McGee did, if he goes with that Court McGee game, game plan, it's gonna be a very close fight. But you gotta think. Max Griffin goes for takedowns here. So I like Max Griffin. I like him to win by decision. Decision one plus, plus 150, I don't hate it. Max Griffin straight, I don't hate it. Um, I got it minus 172. You see it at minus 190 now. I see some love for Carlos Condit. Don't really understand it, but hey, uh, Max Griffin, if he does not go for takedowns, it'll be a very close fight. You, you got a favorite Condit in the striking, but Max Griffin's striking has been looking really good. He has a lot of pressure, lots of volume. He's a very tough guy himself. But of course, you know, Carly Condit, Carlos Condit is the better striker, but it's just a, the glaring, massive path to victory of Griffin getting this down to the mat that really makes me like him. So give me Griffin. Have a have a straight bet on him in there. Minus 172, two units. All right, getting into the main card here. Uh, before I do so, if you guys can leave a like on the video, much, much appreciated. Uh, going live one hour prior to when the prelims start on my channel. So hit the subscribe button. so not miss out on that. But we have Sean O'Malley going against Chris Matinho. I'll throw out the parlay I have. So um, yeah, I have uh, Sean O'Malley versus Chris Moutinho. Fight doesn't go to decision. Parlayed with Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier. Fight doesn't go to decision. It's juiced up. It's chalky, but I like it. I think it hits. Minus 187, and I have two units on it. Um, I took the safest route. I mean, a lot of people are probably going to parlay, you know, the O'Malley KO, which I think is fine. Um, O'Malley inside the distance, which I think is fine. I just wanted to be, like, as safe as possible. Took the fight doesn't go in case... O'Malley gets hurt, you know, Matino clips him, which, again, I think it's very unlikely, uh, but I just took the safest route because there wasn't much difference in a price. So, um, you know, O'Malley is going to win this fight. He's going to win by KO. He's going to win within the first couple rounds. Um, just not much to say. I mean, this is going to be the easiest fight of Sean O'Malley's UFC career thus far. Matinho has been finished four times, two by knockout, two by sub. That's kind of why I'm a little bit iffy on the KO prop because there's not much a difference of the price. I'd probably recommend going for the inside the distance just in case. Maybe he hurts Matinho. Matinho shoots in for a takedown and O'Malley snatches something up. So I'd probably take the inside instead. But yeah, I mean, Sean is going to win this fight. Uh, he's going to win it by knockout. If he does not win it by knockout, if he does not win inside the distance, it's going to be embarrassing, man. I mean, it would be so embarrassing. So embarrassing. But, yeah, I mean, O'Malley's a better fighter. It's not even close. Uh, he's minus 1,000 for a reason. But I do have that parley. I need the fight to end inside the distance. doesn't matter who wins as long as it finishes. But I think Sean is definitely the more likely fighter to get a finish here. So, yeah, I do have two units on that parley. Next, we have Irene Aldana going against Yana Kunitsukaya. And, yeah, yeah uh, Irene looked pretty bad on the scales. Aldana looked pretty bad on the skills. I think she missed weight by, like, three, three and a half pounds. And... I don't know if that helps her or hurts her in this fight because you got to think like the extra weight might help her because Yana's game plan is probably to hold her against the cage, get control time, possibly take her down as well. And maybe that extra weight does help out, but Yana looked, or Aldana looked like crap on the scale. So um, I think it probably does favor Yana. I mean, with the weigh-ins and all that, with the Aldana looking bad, but um, it's a close fight. It's a close fight. I do like Yana at plus money. I think she's the more well-rounded fighter. I think she's fought the better competition. And in factoring, you know, potential bad weight cut for Aldana, I do like Yana Kunitsukai here. Um, plus 100, I, I don't hate it. Yana by decision, I, I don't hate it as well. I don't have a bet on this one personally, but this is one where you might have to follow me on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers, Instagram, DFS by the numbers, because I'm very close to maybe taking a shot on Yana. Um, very close, very tempted, very, very tempted, especially after seeing the weigh-ins and seeing how bad Aldana looked. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I like Yana. I think she wins. So give me a Kunitsukai for the win. May or may not pull the trigger on that one. I already missed the boat a little bit. I missed it at plus 120. I missed it at plus 110. Now plus 100, plus 102. 
But yeah, the weigh-ins uh, was not a good look for Aldana, in my opinion. All right, next we have Tatu Ivasa going against Greg Hardy, and I like Greg Hardy here. I think the bigger cage does favor Greg Hardy. Um, a lot of people are, are talking about the, the cardio of Hardy, and it, it's horrendous. It is, but um, they're acting like Tatu Ivasa is, is some cardio machine, and he's just not. Both guys have bad cardio. Um, Tatu Ivasa is 1-3 in, in fights that go past the first round. Very interesting fact to note here. Um, I like Hardy to win. I'm not going to bet it, especially because I missed the line. We see a lot of money coming in on Hardy, which is interesting because... I've been getting a lot of hate for this Hardy pick, and, you know, I get it, but I think Hardy's going to stay on the outside, um, you know, throw more volume. Taito Ivasa, very hittable, 50% striking defense. Uh, I don't think Hardy knocks him out. Taito Ivasa has an iron chin, but I think Hardy can win a decision here, which is plus 300. I, I don't hate that, but ultimately, I do have no action on this fight. The pick's Hardy, kind of missed the line already, uh, but if I was to play anything, it would probably be the Hardy by decision. Fight doesn't get a decision, minus 165. Um, don't hate the fight goes to decision. If there is a finish in this fight, I think it's going to be tied to Ivasa closing the distance, you know, racking up those leg kicks. But I just think Hardy's going to stay on the outside and uh, win a points-based decision there. All right, Stephen Thompson going against Gilbert Burns. I do have a bet on Stephen Thompson here. I got him at minus 142. I have 1.5 units on it. I think it's a very good matchup for Stephen Thompson. Me and Uncle Weezy did a, a comment event breakdown on this video. Went very in-depth into it. But basically, Stephen Thompson's very hard to take down. Stephen Thompson is very hard to hold down. It's very hard to, you know, close the range against Stephen Thompson. I think Burns is going to struggle there for sure. The only thing that concerns me is the chin of Thompson. I don't think it's all that great. Uh, he's only been knocked out once, but he has been dropped several times. Uh, his one knockout loss was against Anthony Pettis, which I kind of think was a fluke a little bit in a fight that he was clearly winning that fight. But I just think Gilbert Burns, even then, like, is going to have, you know, problems closing distance, get on the inside to even land that knockout shot. But if Burns wins, it's going to be inside the distance. If you do like Burns, I'd recommend probably the inside the distance. Uh, the under two and a half is something interesting or the fight doesn't go decision even minus 110 plus 100 for the fight doesn't go because if Burns went, it's going to be inside the distance. It's going to be a knockout, potentially a sub, although I don't really see getting down to the mat. And if Thompson wins, you know, maybe he can knock out Burns. I don't think Burns has great durability. I don't think Burns has a great gas tank. And if Burns does try for takedowns, I do think he can slow down for sure. And I think Thompson's going to pick him apart and eventually knock him out. So did not bet the fight doesn't go to decision because I have a bet on Thompson. And I think like six of his last seven fights have went the distance. That kind of scared me off a little bit. But especially if you are on the burn side, probably the under is probably the way to go for sure. But uh, I'll take Thompson, have a bet on him here. And I think Thompson gets it done. All right, next we have the main event. Conor Gregor, Dustin Poirier. And this is going to close out my parlay. Sean O'Malley, Chris Montino. Fight doesn't go to decision, minus 500. Parlayed with Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier. Fight doesn't go to decision, minus 360 for a total of minus 187. Two units on it. I really like that parlay. I think both these hit. I'd be shocked if this went the distance. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's Conor early or uh, or Dustin late. Not much not much to say. I think Conor, if Conor knocks him out, it's going to be in rounds one or rounds two. Conor has zero knockout wins past the second round. We have seen Poirier knocked out two times. I believe both were in the first round, once by Michael Johnson, once by Conor McGregor. I um, mean, yeah, Connor definitely has potential to find a knockout here uh, for sure. Like he hits very hard 13 knockouts in his UFC career. Um, ton of power. That's the X factor, the power for sure. But if Poirier can survive the early storm that McGregor's going to bring, if he can survive those, you know, rounds one or rounds two, Poirier is going to win the fight. Uh, it's a very tough fight to call. It's, it's a 50 50 fight, in my opinion. Um, no strong lean either way, but I do have a strong lean on the, on the fight doesn't go to decision. Um, like it as a parley piece, even like the under, like people are betting the overs for some reason. Um, if there is, you know, money keeps pouring in on those overs, I might take a look at the under like two and a half. I wouldn't go under one and a half, but I like the under two and a half, under three and a half, under four and a half, um, depending on where the line goes. So if more people keep betting these overs, I'll be taking a look at the unders, but, um, yeah, I need the fight to finish. I don't really, I don't really care who wins to be honest. Um, I just need the fight to finish. It could be Connor win, winning in round one or round two. It could be Dustin winning in round three, four, or five. As long as there's a finish in this fight, I'll be very, very happy. Hopefully cash that parlay. Um, as far as picking a winner, I'll pick Connor. I know people are really upset about this pick. I'm not I'm not a Connor fan. Um, not a fan of either guy, to be honest. But I think the X factor of, of that Connor power, um, yes, Poirier's chin held up last time. But will it hold up this time? I, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. But I'm, I'm taking a shot on the pick for Connor. But, again, I really don't care who wins to be honest uh i'd be happy if connor won in round one or round two i'd be happy if dustin won in round three four or five as long as there's a finish i'll be happy but I'll, I'll take a shot on connor i know i'm on an island for this one which is crazy to say because man connor's definitely a fan favorite but I, this is probably the most flack i've ever gotten for a pick so if connor wins 
Um, nobody's going to comment anything, but if Connor loses, probably a bunch of 4A comments coming in. And I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't care who wins to be honest, but I will pick McGregor for the knockout because he was having a lot of success in, the, in that last fight in that first round. Um, Poirier even admit to uh, Connor hurting him, but at the end of the day, like this is a this is a close fight. I don't see how anybody can have a strong lean either way. Um, like this is 50-50 as it gets in my opinion. So we'll see what happens. But again, it need the fight to end inside the distance. So. My six bets, uh, keeping it short and sweet this week. Um, like I said, I, I will be posting my bets on Twitter, and I may or may not add something. But the six I have now, Stephen Thompson, minus 142, one and a half units on it. Max Griffin, minus 172, two units on it. Yuzong Hu, plus 140, one unit on it. Um, Pereira, Price, fight doesn't go to decision, minus 166, two units on it. Giles, Duplessis, fight doesn't go to decision, minus 135, 1.5 units on it. And then the parley of Connor, Dustin, fight doesn't go. Parlayed with uh, O'Malley, Moutinho, fight doesn't go. Minus 187, two units on it. That's about it, guys. Uh, hit the like on your way out. We really appreciate that. Subscribe if you have not yet. If you do want to check out the Patreon to support me more or if you want more content, check it out. Lots of content getting posted there week in and week out. Already have three bets for the next couple cards coming up. Kind of got ahead of the game with the week off. Um, so hopefully to keep, uh, keep killing it. Having a solid year this year and hopefully keep going this week at UFC 264. Good luck, guys, and let's make some money.